I'm John Adams, Technical Director of Spectrum. We would like to offer a series of videos that give some basics on how to install Spectrum receivers. In this video, we'd like to feature the AR600. The AR600 is a full range Spectrum six channel receiver and it has some unique um, features. The AR600 features what we call a feeder antenna. What's important to understand when we install this receiver is that the tip, 31 millimeters, which is the exposed strip portion, is actually the active portion of the antenna. That's the case with both of these antennas. So the portion that has insulation on it is simply an extension that allows you to get the functional portion of the antenna out and away from the conductive material, out and away from the receiver, um, and that's what allows us to be full range. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna give you some tips on installation, then we're gonna show you how to set up and bind the receiver, then we're gonna talk about range checking and uh, rebinding. So here we go. I've brought together the items that we're gonna need in order to do a proper installation. By the way, the first thing that's very important is always safety first. If you have an electric model, highly recommend removing the propeller for just in case. You know, most of the time, not gonna be an issue, but to absolutely be sure we're safe, let's remove the propeller. I have a Park Zone T28 here. So for safety's sake, it's a great idea on electric models to go ahead and take the propeller off. Um, that way, um, while you know, normally you're never gonna have an issue, but that way you definitely won't. So we've removed the propeller and we're good to go. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the hatch. Now the first thing that you need to do is determine where the receiver is gonna go. In this particular case, there's actually a molded section. There's a molded flat area here, and that's the obvious place to place the receiver. If you have an airplane that's not quite so obvious, the location needs to be that all the, all the uh, servo leads will easily reach, and you also want it to be um, as far away as practical from your battery pack, from your motor, from your speed controller, and also your servos. So you'll notice that this is, uh, you know, the battery pack uh, goes here, the speed controller and motor mount up front. You know, this is a great place for a receiver because it isolates it because you want that antenna to be as far as practical away from any of those conductive materials. So in this case, it's a real easy solution. In your case, study the model, uh, find a location where the servo leads will reach the, and it's most optimized uh, to keep the antenna away from the metallic um, items in the model. So we've determined where we're gonna put the receiver. Now the next thing we do is how, what do we use to mount the receiver? So in this case, we have an electric model and in electric models, the standard for uh, mounting receivers is either to use double-sided sticky tape, which I have here, or to use hook and loop material. In nitro models or gasoline powered models that have a higher level of vibration, uh, it's a good idea to use foam, uh, some type of foam, wrap the receiver in foam and then strap it down. Uh, I'm gonna use hook and loop material here because I'm gonna take this receiver out and use it in some other applications. So it makes it easier to take it in and out. In this case, you simply peel off the sticky back and I put the loop or the fuzzy side on the back of the receiver and then the loop side I actually put in the model but then normally the way that I do that is I stick the two together so then I can get precise placement then I'm going to place the receiver in the location that we talked about so the uh, servo plugs will get in place and of course this is a park zone uh, T28, so it's pretty much predetermined where you're going to set this. So I'm going to press that in place. And so now we have the receiver firmly mounted in place. You'll notice that there's also some shock resistance. Um, so the uh, vibration, the minimal vibration that uh, this airplane creates is obviously not going to be an issue with this. Now the next thing we're going to do is show you what to do with the antenna. As mentioned previously, one of the unique aspects of the AR600, and in fact the aspect that makes it full range, is the fact that it has this feeder antenna. And remember, this 31 millimeter length that's stripped at the end is actually the active portion of the antenna. So it's ideal if you mount that in a location that's uh, relatively you know, far away, at least you know, two or three inches away from the battery, from the uh, motor, from the speed controller. Um, and generally what I do, I would recommend figuring out a location for that and then simply taping it in place. And you can find a location where this fits appropriately. And in this case, I'm going to slide it towards the rear of the T28. And I'm gonna tape it in place. And what's important to note is we have the antenna on the extended feeder is facing in this direction, and the other antenna that's coming off the side of the receiver is 
perpendicular to the axis of the model. So basically we've created an L. Um, this um, uh, gives improved signal um, clarity in any attitude. So if the airplane's flying no matter away from you or in any attitude, you have a superior uh, signal because the antennas are in two different orientations. This is called antenna polarization and it's uh, really important in, in the cases with 2.4 gigahertz. And when we get to some the other um, receivers later, we'll show you even more specifically how to polarize the antenna. So next, we're going to show you how to hook up the receiver. Now that we have the receiver installed, we need to hook up the servo leads and the lead from the ESC, or the electronic speed controller, to the receiver. When we get that done, the first thing that we're going to do after that is we're going to bind. So one of the things I do when I'm setting up a new model or with a new receiver is I take a bind plug and the first thing I do is I go ahead and insert that now. So I'll insert my bind plug and that's installed because that's the next thing that we're going to do. It's actually quite easy to put it in at this point um, while we're inserting the uh, servo plugs anyway. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and insert the servo leads. Note the um, the yellow servo lead goes towards the receiver. So it's important that you pay attention to the polarity. That's also marked on the receiver, by the way. The signal goes towards the body of the receiver. And there's the throttle servo. The next one I'm going to plug in is the aileron servo. And that plugs in place, like so. Then I'm going to locate the elevator. This is the elevator servo. And that plugs in place. Then the last one is going to be the rudder. So the rudder goes in place. And I'll insert the rudder. And then double check to be sure that the plugs are securely plugged all the way in and fastened in place. And that's all there is to hooking up your receiver. Next, we're going to bind the receiver to the transmitter. Binding is the process of teaching the receiver the specific code of the transmitter and actually the specific code of the particular model memory in this case. In order to do that, we have an electric model here. We're going to need to power the receiver. In the case of an electric model with an electronic speed controller, when I plug the motor battery in, that's going to give power to the, speak, to the receiver because the speed controller has a built-in BEC or battery eliminator circuit. If you have a nitro model or a model that has a separate receiver pack, you're simply going to turn that receiver pack on, which is going to power the receiver. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and insert the battery. And then when I plug the battery in, notice the sound you heard is the speed controller. Um, the speed controller now knows that it has battery power. It's not yet armed. But more importantly, in this case, the receiver itself is blinking. It's blinking indicating that it's in bind mode. Now the next thing that you need to do is with your transmitter in the particular model that you want to be assigned to this. I've already gone in there and I have uh, model 10, by the way. I've already got it named T28. You're going to bind the transmitter in the model memory that you choose to fly the model with um, to the receiver. In the case of the DX8, I press and hold the trainer button and I turn the transmitter on. And again, specifically in the case of the DX8, it tells me DSMX 22 milliseconds and it just bound. And now if I move the surfaces, you'll notice that everything's working. I have a successful bind. Now that we've successfully bound the transmitter to the receiver, it's time to set the model up. Now setting the model up uh, is, can be quite a lengthy, complicated process in some case. In this case, it's not too bad, it's a T28. Um, of course, what in this case, you need to do servo reversing and travel adjust and so on. So in this case, the You'll notice that the ailerons are backwards, and I do have a Y harness on ailerons, so I'm going to go in to servo reverse ailerons and reverse it. Then also you'll notice that the rudder is backwards. So again, I'm going to go into the rudder channel and I'm going to reverse that. So what you need to do is go in and completely program your radio, uh, which includes travel adjust. If you have a landing gear, you know, get the landing gear working in the right direction, all the surfaces in the right direction. Then, obviously, the throttle needs to be working in the right direction. By the way, the throttle, the propeller's off of this, and I'll throttle up. And you can hear it throttle up and throttle down. We know that everything is working correctly. So at this point, program your radio until your model, everything is working in the correct direction, all the sub-trims, everything is properly trimmed. And then from that point, we need to rebind the model to set the fail-safes.
Rebinding is very important and it's a, it's a step that an awful lot of people fail to do. The reason that you rebind is because during binding you're setting your fail-safe positions. This is especially important for throttle. Say for example that I had to reverse the throttle since the last time that I bound the model. In this case, I didn't. The throttle needed to be normal, but let's say the throttle required reverse. When I bound it the first time, if I had lost signal, fail-safe would have driven the throttle to what was originally low throttle, which in fact is high throttle, basically because I would have had to reverse the throttle. So what's extremely important is after you set up all your directions, your travel adjust and so on, it's necessary to rebind the model so that if you have a loss of signal, um, that the throttle will go to low throttle. And we're going to test that and I'll show you how that works. So we're going to rebind. Uh, just like we did before, the, the bind plug's plugged in, I'm going to plug the battery in, I confirm, I'm flashing here, I'm going to push and hold the, the trainer button. What's extremely important is I need to be at low throttle and all my switches need to be in the position that I want to set fail safe, normally neutral, and then I turn on the transmitter while holding the trainer button. I wait and now everything is bound and everything's working correctly. Now I'm going to unplug my bind plug and then let me show you how fail safe works and in fact you need to test this. This is another reason why you should take the propeller off. Listen, I throttle up and you can hear the motor running. If my fail safe set correctly, if I turn the transmitter off, that represents loss of signal. Watch what happens. When I lose the signal, the motor drops out. So in case, you know, if, heaven forbid something happened and you lost signal, let's say your battery uh, died in your transmitter, or let's say you dropped your transmitter in the lake, or you know, who knows what happened. If you have something that interrupts the signal, by binding at low throttle, that sets your fail safe position and shuts it off. When the signal comes back, this will take just a second here. The transmitters, I have to go to low throttle. It's giving me a low throttle warning. Now it works fine again and everything's back. Again, when I lose the signal, signal drops out, motor dies, much safer way to do it. The last part of every successful receiver installation is a range test. So after we've gone through the entire process, we need to confirm that the system is working properly. The Spectrum radios have a built-in range test. In the case of the DX8, you actually need to scroll to the range test screen, then access the range test screen, and then by pushing the range test button will give you reduced power. In order to do a successful range check, you want to set the model on the ground um, in this orientation so that the fuselage is perpendicular and you're going to walk away from the model 30 paces or about 90 feet. When you get at that 30 pace distance from the model, you're going to turn and face the model and you're going to hold the transmitter like you normally fly your model. In my case, it's something like this. So the transmitter antenna tilted slightly, you know, down uh, just in my stomach and have my hands in place. Then I put the transmitter in range test mode. In this case, I push the trainer button and then I operate the sticks and um, I, I need to be sure that all control functions are working 100%. I should have full control at 30 paces, and if indeed I have full control, then that passes the range check, that approves the installation that you just did, and you're ready to fly.